Guilty Gear Strive Season 2 had two years at EVO, and after the first one, I made a very hard decision after a while in a character crisis to switch characters, mains, if you will, from Milia Rage, my longtime Guilty Gear Exert main, to Baiken, which was a pretty big surprise for a lot of people. At the time, since Season 2 just came out, there were like characters like Baiken and Testament and even Kai where people were like, this, these characters are super, super juiced right now. So I decided to take a risk on a character that wasn't really that established in the tournament meta and see not just how good the character truly was, but also try to develop her the most that I could. So we're going to be looking at my month one Baiken, but a little bit more than the title. I gotta be, I gotta admit, it's a little clickbait, but... We're going to go from month one to about a year-ish, a couple of sets from around a year of playing her, and then how I'm playing her right now. So here we have some online footage. This is, you could tell, is quite old footage between the bursts not connecting, uh, not crossplay, and this is not the first video of me playing Biken on my channel, actually. Uh, I actually started posting about Biken immediately after EVO 2022. So this is about a month, so very fair. And you can see there's a lot of stuff that uh, I've already kind of implemented in my game. The rising super jump K is for the left right that you see me do very often. There's also like the anti fuzzy throw with uh, using Yozan Sen there. So like empty jump into Yozan Sen. So there are a lot of tactics I still use to this day um, that honestly were really strong. <laughs> like, you know, she's kind of straightforward in that way. Um, and here I'm actually practicing a testament because testament was one of the first characters I really struggled with uh, as Biken. So with Milia, she's fast, so a lot of zoning characters, um, you know, HC aside, uh, she can kind of just get it on really easily. Where uh, Biken, you usually need pretty specific strategies in order to fight these characters. So I was really trying to adapt to playing a slower character. Plus, I didn't really know what you're supposed to do with the character really again i shouldn't say she's not developed now because i think she's come a long long way since i picked her up but uh at this time uh she has like a reputation she kind of has this reputation not to be fair uh you know people are kind of random with her people kind of gamble with her a little bit and you can see like i'm just not as tight uh in situations and i like hesitate a little bit more um it was really easy to say that uh learning the baseline of a bunch of matchups was pretty straightforward there was a mix-up that um, I really don't do anymore, so uh, a lot of tech was coming out for her at the time, like using um, Faultless Defense to cancel your air dash that you would go left or right with Yozan Sen. Um, some people still do this. Uh, I actually stopped, I probably stopped doing that maybe like a, a month or so or a couple weeks or so after this. One, as you see, I'm missing it all the time. <laughs> you know, I hit it, cut it combo. Uh, or I, like I would mistime it. It, re it requires some uh, manual timing. So like you have to actually time it for anyone who I mean, of course, if you're watching this channel, you play fighting games. But if you're not like that deep into fighting games, we play like, I don't know, if you speed run or something. Um, a lot of stuff I like to do. I mean, we just say automatic, but it just involves like buffers and stuff to make things easier. So that makes up was just really hard. So watching myself here, like it doesn't look that different to me. Like at a baseline like it's still clearly me but it's just like not everything is that tight i have like a couple things um that are just kind of like my go-to strategies there are things that like uh like the combo before you know i did like the rc walk forward a lot of people think i'm trolling when i do that but one thing that i dropped a ton when i started playing this character was rc confirms i still drop rc confirms sometimes because the confirms are kind of funky and uh i was just kind of just getting a baseline understanding of like what am i actually supposed to do with this character at this point i don't really know her strengths and weaknesses really and there are a bunch of people saying that like biken is like leo and biken's really cheap and top three and and stuff like that uh not top three i'm sorry exaggerating top five at this time all right so here is a little bit further so we're jumping in 2023 now this is february 2023 so actually this tournament is coming up uh actually pretty soon um, this is Mad in Canada. So at this point, I've done a lot of stuff. I doomed about the character. We went to Korea and learned the truth about Seoul and how people are downplaying Seoul like crazy over here. Um, and like I went to Frosty Foul scenes before this. And um, now you're seeing a lot more familiar things. Like my, like my mix-up style is way more familiar compared to 
or similar, I should say, compared to uh, now. So like things like throw into JPP, 6K, fast RC, overhead. A lot of these tactics too, uh, I learned from, um, I, I had an inkling of this, but uh, I would learn later, especially in our, what we'll look at next, is that a lot of these tactics I'm using are really uncommon. So uh, I, as in this character is not only not meta, but um, they're, I don't know how to say this the right way, but like there is a tendency in some fighting games where people are like, this is all that there is, you know, like a lot of people just will default to being like, this game is new. So this game is easy. This is all you do. And they don't try to dig into what things like mean. Uh, as the character is getting built out and like I'm putting things together, honestly, sometimes raging to trading partners, you know, one thing that I, I think I do really well is that when I get mad at the game, I don't tweet about it. Because it's usually just like, it, it doesn't last that long, right? Like it might last a, a day, a couple of days, maybe a, maybe a week or two uh, at most. But um, I kind of just work work through it most of the time. And if it's something that's lasting a long time or repeating, then I'm like, all right, so we got to like address this. Like there's something wrong here. Um, so here I'm, I actually was feeling a little nervous because uh, I lost to Corey the month before at Frosty Fousing. Um But I... My memory, I don't know if it was recorded or not, but before I played him here, I was like, I think, I don't think I got like beat bad. I think I just like made a bunch of mistakes. So I thought it would be okay. And a lot of the things I worked on really, really showed here. So the, the main thing at this point is like a lot of my neutral is way tighter. I, I clearly have a better game plan. I'm moving a little bit faster. Uh, May is a character where I, you can kind of just camp her most of the time. She, uh, you know, if you've been keeping up with the game, a lot of people would say in this patch, I believe, because it's 2.5, that she ended up like top three, top two. But Baikon was only one of the characters where you could say she was even or like slight advantage. Okay. You can really see in how I'm playing that I was really, really ready to play against May. And actually in this patch, I basically did not lose to May at all in tournament the whole patch. Every time I ran to May, I was, I was chilling offline. Here, I'm a little bit open. Again, you could tell it's a season two version because uh, the character is not getting knocked away. Now, that change actually, and I wish we learned this earlier. It was, it, it's funny. If you played Viking for a long time, you're like, obviously it was really stupid. But like, like the numbers is what made it stupid because you could be plus six and then your close slash is seven frames. So you auto frame trap throw, so you can strike throw them. It was really, really silly. I didn't really understand this until, uh, like, I guess EVO 2023, I think. I still had kind of milia brain, like, if I if I send it on instant overhead and they block, I die. Which is true, <laughs> by the way. But the uh, the return for a bike end is really high. I think that's, like, a big theme of the change they made in Season 3. Now, here we're approaching one year. This is pretty much one year. This is after EVO Japan. Actually, quite literally the day after EVO Japan, uh, Mochi. So, uh, last year's Arc Tour World Champion. He hosted an invitational, a team invitational out in Tokyo Tower, which, side note, I didn't know it was a real place. I thought it was only in Card Captor Sakura. I thought it was just, like, anime. So when I went, when I, went I was like, oh, shit, like, this is this is real, right? So um, I play the Evil Japan winner, Gobo, here. So I got this almost a year into playing the character, and it was really at Evil Japan where I was like, okay, like, my bike is different, bro, because the, the biggest things that came out of this tournament uh and our, honestly our time there there's a couple things so one we played one of the uh the frontier regions so in, in my opinion there's like two two main frontier regions and now basically everyone's played each other so the main regions would be like na japan eu which includes like you know like north africa there's middle east players like slash and latif right there's like the main regions and then uh australia is kind of a frontier region and Brazil is, and South America are a frontier region in that they we, they don't just compete with us very often, right? So um, now everyone's played each other. So this was the first time people really played against Australia, myself included. Um, this is the first time we played way more people from Japan. We went to Korea um, for Fighter Spirit, but uh, a lot not a lot of Japanese players went to that at that time. But uh, a lot, just like the, I just kept seeing, especially from the Japanese players, they were like, "What is this guy doing?" <laughs> like every every person I played with biking over there, they were like, "Dude, Lord I plays like so weird, like such a unique biking. Like I've never seen a lot of these tactics, and some tactics that are now like kind of my bread and butter kind of just came out the ether while uh, I played this tournament." Um, 
the Gobo match, honestly, is just a lot of, like, my greatest hits. I basically just hit him with all my greatest hits. Uh, this is because of the 3v3 tournament. It's not actually first to three. It's first to two. Um, and it would have taken a while if it was double limb. It's a team tournament again, so uh, a single limb. But a lot of my... I, I basically just hit him with all of, like, the LK specials. Like, 6k fast RC, which I actually learned from him. Um, I was just hunting for any bike and footage I could. Uh, even for, like, uh, for example, there's a player who I, I always try to give them some props, uh, Shinfil, who, if you go to, um, some of the replay channels, haha, uh, they will upload Shinfil matches, and people are always dumping on them, being like, oh, Shinfil's so random, and stuff like that, but I actually got a lot of ideas and inspiration from this player, and they've had some pretty interesting ideas and techniques I found to be pretty effective, actually, so you should always be open and always vet everyone's tactics if you're trying to learn from other people. Just don't just be like, oh, this guy is random or whatever. Most of the time, you you could always learn from everybody, right? So, um, I at this point, I have like just have learned a lot from a lot of people. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward match too because like, it's honestly just me blocking Zato the whole time and then me trying to just kill Gobo really quickly. They are not really familiar with. Uh, I guess now they're probably way more, but uh, like. From playing like NA players, they're really used to a lot of the mix-up cues for like the invisible left rights and stuff. But in Japan, they're not because they don't. They just do mix-ups differently. They just do stuff differently. So um, they just got hit. By, they just get hit by all my stuff. You know what I mean? It, it's dope. We the streets love that. Uh, this is probably this trip also gave me like a lot of confidence back too because I was just feeling kind of mixed about the game. Uh, what a, what a surprise when you play a character that's not top tier that you have a, a weird feeling about how you're doing. But um, after this trip, I was like, ah, you know, like, she's, she's like, 10th best in the game. Like, you, you could, with a lucky bracket and not running into, like, like Faust or Jacko, you you could do it. You could, like, have a good run. Like, at, at this point also, too, I'm feeling like I could beat, like, uh, like Nako Ryuki in tournament, maybe, with uh, with Biken in this patch. Um, it was also pretty fortunate, looking back, too, that uh, I got Zato, which, again, my training partner, one of my training partners, Jonathan Tene plays Zato, so I had a ton, ton, ton of experience against Zato, even though, funny enough, I lost to uh, two Zatos at EVO Japan, um, because I was just playing really scared, I, in hindsight, I was playing super scared, it it was very fortunate that I got to play a Zato player first, and then after having all the Faust training during the year, because I just really, if you, if you watch me, you know I despise Faust and item throw characters, so going into Nage after and being ready for Faust and him not being familiar with like, this bike and style, because that's, that's basically the only time I played him on this trip. We played Exert together, of course. Um, was just kind of fortunate, but also it's like I had to be ready for the occasion, right? So this is a perfect, like, LK's greatest hits. Like, cross up, you get the meter immediately. Slightly easier version of the combo to make sure you don't drop. At instant overhead plus anti-fuzzy throw. Counter hit means he probably got thrown. He probably tried to throw me, and then kill before he has burst. So here's an interesting time. So I would use footage from, like, one year on the dot later right uh but that's when season three drops so guilty gear strike season two drops in like june i want to say uh, like three weeks before ceo 2022 but guilty gear strike season three started in august starting from guilty gear strike season three they made pretty big changes to biken so if you've been keeping up with the game a lot of these things looked kind of weird right no wild assault burst sending you full screen and not having as much frame advantage Yozansen popping up. Yozansen changed, like, admittedly, while it was really good in some ways, it's also definitely painful in other ways. Like, you see people drop way more stuff with Biken now because confirms are finicky, or you have to do, like, a really simple combo instead of getting, like, uh, let's say, 30 to 40 percent. You gotta go for, like, 10, 20 percent. So her highs are higher, but her lows are lower. They added, like, clean hit gun. They added a bunch of stuff, whether on purpose, you know, Yozansen stuff, or by accident, clean hit gun. I think it's a feature. It's still in the game, by the way, so I think it's a feature at this point. And Season 3 is a pretty short patch, but I do think the best way to top this off is my set from Battle Coliseum. This is actually a top 8 qualifier, so the winner of this gets into finals the next day against um, the person who got 3rd at Arc of Japan. This is Steven Soul, who traveled. My man went on a journey from Japan to Brazil to come to this tournament to try to qualify and was one of the main favorites to play. So uh, this is in Season 3, So, but... Not the current version where they did stuff like nerf Wild Assault and stuff like that. This version of the game is pretty wild. 
and a lot of people myself included think this is one of the least balanced versions of this game funny <laughs> by the way funny but uh not that balanced right uh and you could see one outside of the you know game having all the mechanics we're familiar with now a big thing here is just game plans efficiency and routing toward routing my best to kill and taking advantage of certain ideas and concepts that you didn't really see before so a really simple example would be what happens in like a minus three situation so we're talking about this so i did h comedy that's her chain so her two main cancel options are tatami gaishi and h comedy right both of these moves are minus three and one pushes you out that's tatami gaishi and one pulls you in that's h comedy the only way you could stop the tatami pushing out and the chain pulling in is if you use some type of passive defensive mechanic like instant block, instant block, faultless defense, deflect shield, stuff like that. Now the thing is here is that different characters have different responses based on the position because even though it's disadvantage, it's pretty good frame data. So Giovanna and Soul, for example, they have five heavies that are minus five. Are there characters that have five frame moves that could punish these? Yes, but are they actually close enough to do so? Usually no. So a unique thing about bike and with canceling is that once you play against characters and kind of get this idea, you start understanding like, oh, there's some characters I push them out. I can like try to hit hit boxes. I can walk away from things and hit them. Or there's some characters where, oh, I want them kind of close because they don't really have stuff that can challenge me here. I have a four frame. I could dash at them. I could do a bunch of stuff. So Soul, unless he takes a big risk, he's actually not that great at that situation he has to do stuff like gambling on 6h or being close enough to use 2k or dash blocking at me so i take advantage and i use my 6k to hit his advancing normal and get a really big return so there's a lot of like these type of ideas that i use uh just small little implications of situations because since this character can't combo of all her stuff like one of her biggest flaws i i really do understand her strengths and weaknesses at this time and one of her, by far her biggest flaws is her conversion ability. Like so she would just straight up beat Soul, for example, if she could just combo off more stuff <laughs> on it, frankly. But when you do get a combo opportunity, you have to do your best. Usually against like, I have found that like, for, for lack of a better word, if I'm better than a person, I just get all the stuff that I want. But if it's someone who's like my skill level or someone who might be like slightly better, I get a lot of like weird hits that you have to kind of finagle to confirm. If you're like, man, like why why is this dude dropping all the time? It's a weird hit. Like I got one in the previous round of this bandit bringer. So I used to jump D and normally on jump D counter hit, you do jump D, air dash jump D, but he was really high on the bandit bringer. So the top of the JD is still connected. But then the second one, cause again, normally you just do it JD, air dash JD, the second one didn't work. So I just didn't get anything. And I was like, oh snap, what do I do? And that's just, the, that's just the life of playing Bika. It's actually, uh, I, I've been thinking recently, like, for people who play, like, some older anime games, I'm like, if you want that older classic experience, you just play this character. Because you're going to drop a lot of stuff just because just you're going to get a lot of weird hits all the time. And it takes kind of a while to uh, get used to freestyling combos. That's also why some people... Um, uh, I, I kind of used I used to get more flack about my combo selection being too simple, but there's some other high level biking players who also have this, and it's mostly just for that reason. Like, I it's just better to like sacrifice damage but finish the combo than try to like finagle something, drop it, and then like the person next to you is playing like Soul or Nago or like Happy Chaos or something like a character that just, that just combos into the same thing all the time no matter what that's the bike and journey so far so now we're in 3.5 that match we were watching was basically the last big tournament of season three we have frosty Fousting 2024 Sheesh. coming up uh, at the time of this recording i'm leaving like in three or four days or something so and looking back honestly i'm glad i switched to this character man like she i feel like really rewards you for studying the game which i really really like uh it would be nice if the, if she was better but we 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 do what we must you know what i mean uh i i also think a lot of techniques have been developed with her and she's way more developed than she was when i started her of course i mean you know over time right but i don't know how much more things people would have done is kind of what i mean well, yeah let me know what you guys think as usual if you have any questions or comments definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below youtube really likes it if you watch other videos so definitely go do that like and subscribe if you guys feel like it and i'll see y'all next time peace out